Madam Clerk. Council Member Von Rudenberg. Here. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sims. Here. Council Member Battaglia. He'll be with us. Okay, and Mayor LaBrosse. Here. Would everybody please rise for the flag salute? Wait. The flag, Diego? Yes. I pledge okay. allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll go right to the uh, agenda. Uh, before that, I need to do the statement. This oh, meeting is ahead. being held in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6 at SEC. Notice having been published according to law with a copy on file in the city clerk's office and a copy posted on the bulletin board in city hall. Thank you. We need to close the executive session. No, with that. Um, we don't Steve, need to. Steve was going to mention what was said. What was, are you there? Steve? You're muted, Steve. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Yes. Um, in terms of litigation, the only litigation we did speak about um, in the closed executive session is the ongoing affordable housing litigation. Um, and the upcoming fairness hearing later this week on uh, that matter, um, which hopefully will go well. Uh, aside from that, uh, there were no other cases discussed in closed session. Thank you. Okay, do we want to close executive session at this time or, or later? Why not? Yeah, we can do it now. Motion to close executive session. Offer. Second. Roll call. Council member von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims. Aye. Council Member Battaglia. You're muted, Leo. Mayor LaBros. Aye. Okay, with that, I guess we'll go right to Ted with the agenda. Yes. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council and invited guests. This is the October 20th, 2020. Committee of the whole agenda. First is a presentation of the excavation ordinance by suburban engineering from engineer Aaron Avalon. Um, Aaron, would you please proceed? Sure. Thank you, Ted. Um, I have tonight just an executive summary for the mayor and council. I've been working with Steve's office on this. This is an update to chapter 148, your excavation openings ordinance. I'd like to run through just a few key points that were changed. First, we combined the fee list into a table and adjusted the amounts. Um, I'll follow up at the end with the fees and give you some examples. I think this might require the most conversation. We wanted to keep a lower fee for one and two family and we split them from multifamily and commercial and utility companies. But again, I'll talk th about that at the end. We've increased the moratorium from three years to five years on your roadways. So that's when you've um, paved them when they're under moratorium where they should not be opened from three years to five years. We've added a winter moratorium. So that's no openings permitted between November 15th and April 1st. We've added a clause that all utilities that are no longer needed cannot be abandoned in place. They must be removed from the right of way. Any waiver from these requirements um, needs to be provided by the city manager. So that's nothing that the zoning department will be able to waive or an engineer, this would be the city manager. Emergency excavations will obviously need to remain. So that's when you'll have some openings in your moratoriums, um, seasonal, and then also within your newly paved roads. The next business day will be required that an application must be filed for these excavations to then write the restoration that will be required. If it's not filed that um, same or the next business day, $100 a day will be added to the application fee. Again, I'll talk about these fees in a little bit. 
For coordination with utility companies, we ask that the utility company provide yearly notice by November 15th for their anticipated scope of replacement and construction. The city will also commit to provide yearly lists of their roadways and their road program each year. Utility companies will have to post an annual performance bond and maintenance bond by January 31st of each year to cover the, sub the following year. Prior to releasing the um, previous year's performance bond, all outstanding application and review fees, all work that was rejected must be completed and all maintenance bonds must be posted by utility companies. Once, all those th once those three conditions are met, the performance bond can be released. The specifications that were changed, steel plates are prohibited um, and when installed will have a time limit assigned to them. Roadways under moratorium. So again, this is the five year moratorium from paving, from final paving. If anything is greater than a single utility trench, so we recognize that there's gonna be homeowners that wanna hook up to a utility within the area. That's really where you're gonna see this single utility trench. That's up to 50 square feet of trench perpendicular to the center line striping of the road. One utility trench can be performed within, within a road under a moratorium and repaired with infrared technology. Anything beyond that 50 square feet of trench of opening um, will require curb to curb corner to corner restoration. So we're looking at entire block of a two inch mill and a two inch overlay of the entire roadway, all new striping. If it goes into an intersection, the entire intersection will require the mill and overlay as well. So a road that's not under moratorium. So this is something that hasn't been paved within the last five years. If it's a perpendicular trench. So again, we're thinking utility service connections to an existing main. The base, um, what they're gonna come through and do temporary restoration of this trench, and that's gonna sit for one month. After a month, they'll be allowed to come in and mill off the top two inches and then come back in with a surface course. This mill and surface course will exceed um, each of the, the original trench dimensions. So if you have a three foot wide trench, on each side, we're gonna exceed that trench width by um, one foot, 12 inches for your final restoration. That's gonna also help with the pavement structural, um, the structural measures of the pavement. A roadway um, restoration, not under moratorium, moratorium, parallel trenches. So again, before I talked about something that's running perpendicular to the center line, if a utility is coming in and they have to replace a main and the road's not under moratorium, so they're gonna run parallel with the center line. If the excavation does not cross the center line, so if it doesn't require removal of center line striping, the company will have to do curb to center line for 25 feet past the trench on each end. So if you have a 100 foot long trench, they're gonna go 150 feet with their paving, pretty much a half width. If it crosses the center line, it's gonna be curb to curb for 25 feet past the trench on each end. So that's really the technical changes that we are proposing. Um, with that, I wanna talk a little bit about the application changes, um, the fees and the procedure updates. Does anyone have questions on that first though? Council, mayor? No. Okay. No. So the application package, um, we are committed. Um, we've talked to the city about issuing permits within 10 days of receiving an application, 10 working days, so two weeks. The application must contain a signed application, which we have a new document that we've created for the zoning department, a copy of plans, which will include traffic control plans for the traffic divisions review, an insurance certificate, um, naming everyone as um, additional insured, application fees, review fees, and um, that will be required for a complete application. Once we've reviewed that complete application, everyone will also have to have an inspection fee and a performance bond, which I'll get into. Um, in speaking with Jim, we wanted to stay away from escrows as much as possible just to remove that um, need to set those up. So we are doing application fees and review fees. So these are gonna be set fees that don't require an escrow to be set up. Inspection fees for one or two family homes will also be a fee. 
So it's gonna be a set fee that the residents will be aware of ahead of time. Any multifamily, commercial or utility company inspection will be under escrow and based on the anticipated number of hours. All right, so the, um, the fees. So I wanted to give you guys some example of what we were looking at previously. There was a single fee assigned for road openings and we have it split, it's sidewalk, curb and roadway. Most of it is road opening. So that's when I'm gonna give you guys some fees for reference point. So for a one or two family residential up to 50 square feet, the old fee was $75. That covered review, application and in inspection. The new fee that's proposed is a $150 review and application fee and a $150 inspection fee. This will allow um, actual inspections to take place and if needed for the city to use a consultant for those inspections. Multifamily commercials. So this is when we get beyond the one and two family residential. If we look at a assumed 150 square foot opening, the old fee would have been $150. Again, that was to cover review, the application fee, review fee and inspection. The new fee would be a $600 application and review fee. And then the inspection would be an escrow based on an hourly rate of $125 an hour for Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Anything that would be considered overtime or outside normal working hours would be a $185 an hour review, uh, inspection fee. We liked having these fees set hourly. We think that this will help promote um, work to be performed uh, and expedited within your right of ways um, and the proper attention given to it. For utility companies, um, if we look at the, uh, let's assume 1000 linear feet of a replacement, not that deep, it's gonna be three feet wide. We have a 3000 square foot trench. The old fee would have been about 2,900 dollars. The new application and review fee will be right around there. It's going to be a little bit less actually. It's going to be $2,250, but we're going to have a separate inspection escrow, which again is those same hourly rates I just talked about, the $125 an hour, normal working hours, or $185 an hour outside those normal working hours. I talked a little bit about um, performance guarantees. So performance guarantees will be set again annually um, based on the prior or the, it's really based on either the prior work done or what they are proposing to do a utility company. So we'll have to look at what the trend is for that utility company. Up to a thousand square feet performed annually. So of, again, of opening will be $50,000 of a performance guarantee. So if they don't complete the work, if they don't come in and finish the pavement, this would be available for the city to use. Between 1,000 and 5,000 square feet of opening, there would be a $100,000 performance guarantee. And greater than 5,000 square feet, it's gonna be $250,000 for a performance guarantee. Again, this is to protect the city um, if a utility, utility company came in and did not complete the work. Um, this is this excludes anyone um, that is before the land use board. So I think that's something important to note. So if you have a developer redevelopment coming in and they already have these fees set by their planning board, board of adjustment, these would um, not be required. They already have a performance guarantee. Maintenance guarantees will be required to be posted by utility companies annually um, it will be based on 20% of the prior year's performance bond. It will be good for two years. So let's say you have a utility come in, everything looks satisfactory. So we move from performance guarantee to a maintenance guarantee. So we accept the work is accepted. You move on to a maintenance guarantee, a trench settles. You would put the utility company on notice to come back and fix that trench. If they didn't, you would have this maintenance guarantee. Again, that's good from two years from final acceptance. Um, permits are valid for 30 days unless an extension is requested and granted. 
And as far as inspection procedure, the only thing I wanted to note is my understanding is the intent is that the fees would cover if you needed to use a consultant for inspection. Um, but in the future, if you had your own inspectors, they would also be performing this work. And I think, Ted, if you wanna speak to that at all, if that's the intent, I just wanted to leave that open. And that's all I had for my executive summary. Okay, before Aaron signs off, is there any questions from the council? Yeah, I, yeah, I got yeah, I got a question. For instance, the this utility company they are putting right in the in the in the post sometimes big boxes and they only like a four feet from the sidewalk, sometimes five feet. They really low that somebody that is walking close to that back, they can hit their head on it. Who gonna enforce or what is gonna be the parameter that this utility company that have to follow or who gonna be the inspector from the city, they are gonna say this is too low, this is not right. Or sometimes they like cable hanging from the from the post. Who gonna be the guy that gonna enforce it? That everything should be the right way. So we set the fees again, if you need to use a consultant for these utility projects that you can, um, if the city has staff or if they'll have future staff for these inspections, then that would also be supported. But we did set these um, fees based on an hourly rate that would be required for the work, um, Leo, if you had to use a uh, consultant. But in a way that we can say, listen, every box that they are putting in this place, that they should be minimum, I would say, eight feet. We can coordinate that with them if that's a problem that we have. It's not really under, I don't know that this is under this section, but that's something that can be coordinated. I'm hoping that the utility companies and the city around the table talking about their projects ahead of time will promote that conversation much easier. Okay. Aaron, I would, I would speak and, to and, that. Aaron, yeah, and I would just, okay. go ahead. Yeah, I, I would, Deputy Mayor, it's your, your show. Please go ahead and I'll, I'll jump oh, in after I you're done. I wanted to ask if you would send this, sir, this summary to the city manager so he could send it to the council members. This way we have it in writing and then next time when we have to look at the ordinance, we have something to refer to. Thank no you. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. And, and, and just I was going to add, the ordinance will be in full introductory format at the next meeting. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, th this arises because there has been you know, insufficient uh, attention to restoring our our streets after utility work. So this is a way to, and given all the, the work that is happening in Hackensack and all the good things that are happening here to ensure that, you know, when we spend money on repaving a road or, or, or work of that nature, that if it's, if work has to be done, that it is restored to a level that is acceptable to all of you and the residents of the city. So, so that's the bottom line of what this ordinance is and why we're doing it. Um, it is a lot of changes to the to the, the section of the code, but as 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 Aaron said before, it was a team effort. A lot of people took a look at this, and uh, you know, it, it kind of encompasses best practices that we've located from other places that have had these issues. So uh, it's an important change. And so, uh, you know, we hope uh, on introduction, as I said, it's gonna be one of the longer ordinances that we've put together. And we felt you, you should have a, you know, a, a sneak preview of it. So it, it's not overwhelming when it comes time for the meeting. Aaron? Yes. Um, I'm just curious, what other municipalities or do you know of any municipalities that have uh, a similar ordinance to this? And how does the utility companies in particular uh, feel about them or deal with them? Is there any, you know, pushback or? Yeah, I think that w this ordinance is is right in the middle, to be honest. We, we looked at a lot of ordinances throughout Bergen County, Hudson County, some in Passaic as well. We, we compared fees, we compared what the restoration requirements were. I think it's right in the middle. So I think you're not going to really surprise anyone um, with it. I think there's always going to be a, a deal to be made, right? Um, that people will try to come forward on um, the utility companies, but I do think that it's it's right in the middle of what we see in the surrounding areas. Good job, Eddie. Good job. How, did, how does this affect existing construction? In other words, is it grandfathered or will they have to meet the obligation, especially on Main Street? Yeah, that's a good question. Anyone with a road opening permit um, before this is um, accepted, I believe, would be grandfathered, right, Steve? Yes. Yeah, you would think that would be the case. Um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, 
you know, we probably should take a look at maybe clarifying the effective date, you know, of that and maybe putting something in the, uh, in the ordinance itself that says, you know, it will take effect 30 days after adoption by the city council for all projects um, initiated after that date. We can put well, something for, like that in the, in the if, other section. If a project coming up is, you know, you see what's happening on Main Street and they're going to have to dig a, a, a trench to hook up, you know, in front of their building on Main Street, that building in the street has yet to be paved. You know, I don't know if that's going to be, uh, you know, whether we're going to have to force that person to pave the street, even though we plan on paving it anyway. I don't know, you know, that's just one of the things that may come up. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, right now, um, that pavement, understanding that a pavement program was coming would not likely be mandated. And that's something that could be waived. Um, right. But afterwards, it will be under moratorium. And we tried to be fair, understanding that the city wants um, to promote redevelopment and the efficiency of hooking up to these utilities. So we tried to be very fair and aware of that in preparing this ordinance. But I do okay. think there's always going to be that case by case where you have to look at this exactly. and there, that's why there's a provision from the city manager to waive these requirements. I agree. All right. Okay, we ready to move on? Again, Aaron, good job. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Yep. Number two is the city code 170-12 commercial vehicles um, John Street, it's a clarification. Um, more people have been taking commercial mm -hmm. vehicles home without garaging. The enforcement was lighter at the time due to the pandemic, but now has gotten out of hand. And I've been enforcing this per the ordinance. This is Dean Battalion's words. So there is an amendment that's proposed. Nothing herein shall be deemed prohibited parking commercial vehicles or equipped related thereto on residential streets while it's being used in the transaction of business with the owners or occupant of the residential property in the area or in the area for the purpose of installing, maintaining, or performing public utility services. Basically, this is going to give the city the ability that if you're you know, installing gutters or you're a moving van, by all means, you're allowed to use the city street to park for commercial purposes, but you just can't leave your truck sitting there for three days or, you know, it's a holiday weekend. So Jimmy the Mason's going to leave his truck till Tuesday. Um, the city's not going to tie up its streets and we're not going to take the liability of that vehicle being parked there. Steve, any other comments? Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to have some further meetings about exactly um, you know, how to, um, um, you know, address, uh, address this, um, hang on one second here. But aside from that, I, I don't really have anything more to add aside from we'll follow up with you. Okay. Um, any comments or concerns of the council at this point? And next I have on the list, um, the resolution, uh, strike that request of residential parking for Hamilton Place and Anderson Street. Um, the city of Hackensack, this is a letter to advise the following residential area may be considering resident parking stickers. Hamilton Place between Summit Ave and Prospect Ave. Anderson Street between Summit Ave and Prospect Ave. Residential parking stickers are $5 per vehicle and your license and registration must match your home address. Stickers will be available at the Hackensack Police Department located at 225 State Street. Um, this is a, a request from the residents there. Obviously people are parking in that section and prohibiting residents that live there from using their own parking in front of their residence or their driveways getting out of them. Any questions? No, if the residents requested it, uh, you know, we need to look at it. Yep. Uh, number, four, number four, discussion. Resolution appointing crossing guards for 2020 and 2021. Excuse me, one second. Ma'am, there's a public session when we're done for you to make comments. Okay, Passaic Street, go ahead. Um, this appointing resolution is for the city 
to reappoint back our crossing guards. Basically at the end of the school year, when their service was terminated with the school board of education calendar, um, we, by the code, are required to let those people go. And then by code, we're required to reappoint them. The Board of Education is telling us that on November 2nd, they will have in-person school instruction. Now, if that fails to commence that day, we still have the ability to hold them off. But this is a resolution reappointing. And I have a list of... Um, um, let's see about um, 35 maybe 40 crossing guards full-time and part well not full-time but um, full-time or alternates for the 2020 list and that's generated from the previous service that we had from the crossing guards that we used Number five is a discussion in the intro of an ordinance for public urination and defecation. This came from our um, constable. There was nothing in the city code for enforcing people that were doing this. It went under a nuisance statute, but um, our judge um, basically was not holding these cases because they said they really didn't apply. So this is a a basically redefining of the language of these cases when they come up and to be considered. And if people are asking what the fine would be if they got the maximum, it'd be up to a $2,000 fine and 90 days in jail and or community service. That's the maximum penalty. Obviously the judge has a discretion of, you know, how far they want to force the first offense, you know, it's up to the judge essentially, but the, the end of the line hardest penalty would be up to 2000 fine and a 90 day jail and one or um, community service. Any questions? Um, next would be the amendment to the ordinance to the shade tree advisory committee. Um, that was put in place. Um, right now, the penalty for violence, and let's check that. Um, this is um, basically a, a uh, ability to define the role of the Shade Tree Commission and their role in assisting the city in making better choices and helping uh, homeowners with questions. And they're going to feel that the day-to-day -day, um, tree considerations, hazards, um, removals will be done. Obviously, we have a responsibility when these trees are removed to have them replanted. Um, that's not in dispute, but we're just trying to define roles so we don't spend our time wasting each other's time. And, and I thank the members of the Shade Tree Commission for their service. Uh, last but not least is the resolution approving the SLEO 3 agreement. <laughs> The Board of Education approved that last night on 2019, the agreement between the city that was drafted by Steve Kleiman um, that now restores all the language issues and all the financial commitments between the Board of Education and the SLEOs that we provide to them. So our SLEOs obviously were hired by us, but essentially they're working for the Board of Education on the flip side of it, the crossing guards are our employees that provide service to the Board of Education. So um, the SLEO 3 agreement was approved. Um, and I guess it's the next meeting we will finally uh, finish this, which is November 3rd. Um, and we will be complete. The next meeting is November 9th. I'm sorry. November 3rd is election day. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so that's right. We changed the date. I, my apologies. So this would complete the city manager's issues. Okay. With that, I need a motion to open to the public, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Von Rudenberg. 
Deputy Mayor Constrino. Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims. Aye. Council Member Battaglia. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Okay, members of the public, if you would like to speak, please give your name to the clerk. You will have three minutes. Please unmute your device. First person, please. Dennis Ferrioli. Mr. Ferrioli, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, my concern. Mr. Ferrioli, you, you froze. I don't know if you can hear me. Mr. Ferrioli. The committee in the city is working on solving the issue. Somebody that person who lived on Passaic Street regarding um, the parking. And this woman stressed to me that she lives on Passaic Street for the last two years. And they have about a half dozen cars in their residence. And the landlord, according to her, does not provide adequate parking for their home. And I'm like, well, okay, I, I, I understand that, but there's no reason for you to park two blocks away in front of my home and then leave it there for days on end. Now I've noticed this past week, by sheer coincidence, somebody parked in between two other cars. I saw from my window, they're doing drugs. I know this because I went outside, knocked on their door, opened their car door and a, and, a, and a blast of smoke came out of it. So if the cars weren't parked there, this would lead to somebody trying to do drugs or leave garbage on my sidewalk or whatever, condoms or whatever, this would not happen. So if you guys intend to do parking stickers or you know, in residential areas like my own, that's fine, I'm all for that, but Somebody who has a parking sticker that lives on Passaic Street should not be allowed, and maybe I'm misunderstanding your, your comments tonight, they should not be allowed to park on Hamilton or Anderson or Ross or Euclid or and so on. If you live in a, a certain street, you should have to park on that street within the front of your home or the driveway or close proximity to your home, not three blocks away. You know, I mean, I, I just feel there's a better solution to this. Other towns surrounding us don't have any parking at night. And even though this is a city and not a small borough or small town, you should consider in the strictly residential neighborhood part of Hackensack, you should consider just parking in your driveway. You know, the smallest driveway on my street is 85 feet long. My driveway and other driveways are over 100 feet long. The, side, the driveways that are people living in Pasig Street, I don't know what that's all about, but those homes where this girl lived were renovated within the last three to five years. I saw them being renovated. If they were made from a single family dwelling into a two family dwelling, you would assume, or at least I would assume that the landlord or owner of the property would have provided adequate parking for a two-family home. So that's, like I said, again, I'm just speculating. I don't know what the deal is there. I just feel that it's not only the optics don't look well for a community in this neighborhood, as well as I do think that it's a little bit unsafe. Things can happen. People blend in and, you know, the cops can't be everywhere. I think they've got more on their plate than they can handle right now to begin with. So I've taken up enough of your time and um, I thank you, you know, for hearing me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next person from the public, please. Next person from the public, please unmute your device. Give your name to the clerk, you will have three minutes. Hello? Okay, uh, street. So, hello? Yes, hello. Give your name to the clerk, please. Can you hear me? You're a little broken up. Yeah. Hello? It's Kiana for Safe Street. Go ahead, ma'am. It's Kiana on for Safe Street. Okay. So the 
previous person, I was the person he spoke with, but my issue is, is that on the same street, you can't park. We're not allowed to park on the street at all. The and communication is has four cars that could probably fit in the driveway, but it's a three-family home. So not all of us are granted that, you know, Go ahead, ma'am. So we're not all granted that privilege. On Summit Street, between Summit and Central, we can't park there. It's resident. On West Hamilton and West Anderson, we can't park there. It's resident. The only uh, street parking that we're available to is the East. And then the other side of summit, but you can go. Ma'am, I have to tell you, you're you're. And then on you're top of that, uh, the police station won't grant us parking permits around the corner because they said we're not allowed to sit on that. It's not. It's rude but for you to stop to try to interrupt. I would just like. An amendment to the code because Essex Street, they can't park on their street, but they're granted other parking places. They're given a sticker for other streets because they can't park on their street. So I don't understand why the six. Excuse me, Miss. Miss, unfortunately, you have a bad connection. Virtually, I don't know about anybody else in the council. I couldn't understand a word you said. So my suggestion is sign off, sign back in. Diego, our IT man, will put you in, and we'll see if we can try this again because you just spent all your time, and I apologize, but none of us heard what you were saying and not with any clarity. So, so can we yeah. try that again, please? And also, please get her name and so you can call her tomorrow to get a better story if she can't get back in. Please. Diego, can you talk to her offline and see if you can get that information for me, please? She's done. Yes, I will. Okay. Go ahead, Mayor. I'm sorry. Next person from the audience, please. Please unmute your device. Give your name to the clerk. You have three minutes. Thank My you. My name Mayor. is Alexis, and I'm also from um, Passage Street. What she was trying to say is that Passage Street isn't allowed to park on Passage Street Summit. Eventually, it will be Hamilton or Anderson because we went to the police station multiple times, and they won't grant us a resident sticker because we have Passage Street on our license. So the only way that we can park is on Anderson or Hamilton. And no, we are not one of those people. We are not those people that park in their driveway, park blocking their people's driveway. We park there because we're, that's the only place we're allowed to. So unless we're able to get resident sticker, uh, resident parking stickers, because everybody on Pacific Street, we're not allowed. All right, this is gonna be something that council's gonna have to uh speak to the city manager about it and get into a discussion. Okay, so miss, can you do me a favor? Can you call tomorrow the city manager's office and we'll have a discussion offline because this is gonna take some detail, some background information. I am aware that you can't park on Passaic Street um, because of the traffic and the width of the road, but let's see if we can find some solutions. But um, there's no point in having this debate because um, I don't have the facts in front of me, locations, and we'll have that conversation. But I do thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Next person from the public, please unmute your device. Give your name to the clerk. You'll have three minutes. Hearing no members of the public, motion to close to the public. Offer. Second. Roll call. Oh. Council Member Von Rudenberg. Deputy Mayor Constrino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims? Aye. Council Member Battaglia? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Okay, everybody, we'll see you at seven o'clock. No, wait, you need to Close. adjourn the Motion meeting. To close. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Okay. All right. See everyone at seven.